Serbia gets independence in 1878. Why do you know this? Uh, <laughs> 1978, 1878. 1878, and Bulgaria is still a principality of Turkey. So in Arms of the Man, the Serbo-Bulgarian War happens with the newly formed kingdom of the Serbs, led by Milan the First. Bulgaria is being led by Alexander the First, but they're still a vassal state of Turkey. And what happens in 1885 is the Bulgarians decide it's time for there to be a Bulgaria. Nobody is helping us out here. The Serbs are thinking, well, wait a minute, Bulgaria is our neighbor. If they're gonna be growing in size, they're gonna be a threat to us, but we don't have to worry about it too much because the Ottomans are going to destroy them. You have the huge Ottoman empire. And the Ottomans were all about making Ottomans, like big sofas and things, am I right? They're a huge empire and they're called, the, the people call them the sick man of Europe because they know that the empire is falling apart. Everybody knows that the Ottoman Empire is not gonna, is not gonna last, but Serbia thinks we don't have to worry too much about Bulgaria because the Ottomans will crush the Bulgarians. And the Bulgarians say, we don't care. We're going to get Bulgarian independence. And we're probably all gonna die, but we're gonna die as Bulgarians. So it becomes this kind of national martyr-like Bulgarian identity movement, it would be the equivalent, equivalent of Nicaragua trying to take on the United States. They just would know that the United Not States- That's gonna happen, right. They just, just like, come down and crush them. They just, they don't have the resources. They don't have any kind of the weapon. But they have that civic pride. They're like, no, but we need to be allowed. And the Serbs think, you know what? While the Turks are coming to destroy the Bulgarians, we also don't want Bulgaria to grow in territory, even though they had just been friends. Bulgaria and Serbia fought together to get Serbia's independence from the Ottoman Empire. <laughs> Serbia gets it. Once they get it, they're like, yeah, we did that. We don't have to help Bulgaria. We got our independence. Don't that's, help that's like so two-faced. But that's what Balkans do. That's what we do in the Balkans. So that's a Balkan thing. We would have done the same to you. Right. Um, <laughs> and so they gather all of their forces. Everyone prepares to die. The Serbs invade from the West thinking, well, Bulgaria's about to get crushed. We're gonna invade. We're gonna take what's left of Bulgaria and incorporate it into Serbia. And here's the great, the huge surprise is the Turks never show up. The Ottoman Empire doesn't show up. The Serbs have invaded and the Bulgarians are like, oh, okay, I see. You wanna throw garbage cans. <laughs> So while we were about to fight the country that we helped you get independence from 10 years ago, you decided to invade through the back door. Like that was a thing to do. How nice that us Slavs decided to stick together this way. So the Bulgarians are able to very quickly pull their, all of their troops across Bulgaria and defeat the Serbs. The war lasts 13 days. So people then recognize Bulgaria as a country. It's not till 1908 that Bulgaria fully gets its independence. And the thing is that, you know, Shaw wrote this play thinking, this is a great analogy because this is also stupid. War is so stupid and borders are so stupid. And the right. idea of people fighting over nothing is so dumb. You know, he's kind of using the Balkans to make his point about war being ridiculous. Right. But all of these issues, 19 years later, caused World War I. So Shaw writes this play where it's like, here's this story of this ridiculous war in the middle of nowhere where all these people are crazy and it doesn't really matter and it has no impact on us. He writes it in 1894, but 20 years later, Englishmen are dying in World War I because of the insanity that is the Balkans. Bulgaria has, has roses, Serbia has a warlike nature, Romania has gymnastics. <laughs> <Head back. laughs>